When did your something's not right here gut feeling ever save you? Wife called me while I was at work, just to say she was home from her night shift and planning to go to bed. She had worked night shift for years and never called me just to say she was home and going to bed before. She also sounded weirdly detached on the call. I asked her if she was okay, she said yes just really sleepy. I got a weird feeling and told her I was going to leave work and come home. She told me I didn't need to, I said okay and then I left work and rushed home anyway. Found a suicide note taped to the garage door. I got to her in time, rushed her to the ER, and got her the help she needed. A week of inpatient psych, followed by changes to medications and doctors. This was about 5 months ago, and she is so much better now. My sister since she was about 5 was always obsessed with tsunamis and would always ask my dad every night before she went to sleep if there would be a tsunami that night, we lived on a beach. About 5 years later when our family was holidaying in Samoa an earthquake struck at about 6 am, it was only a dull low rumble but went on for over a minute. Everyone at the resort woke up and went outside for a few minutes then went back to bed. My sister having been obsessed with tsunamis ran down to look at the water and noticed the sea going out and saved a lot of lives including my own. There was about a minute from her noticing till that tsunami hit. Luckily for us there was a cliff right behind the resort if not a lot more people would have been killed. I went to hospital with shortness of breath and my heart racing. They did a chest x-ray, blood test for blood clots, ECG, and a few other tests but all came back normal. After observing me overnight everything still looked good, oxygen saturation was perfect, my heart rate was still a bit elevated but nothing too crazy, and it seemed that it was likely leftover symptoms from a bad virus that I'd had a week or so earlier. The ER doctor asks me how I would feel if they sent me home and I just had a bad feeling about it all. I told him as such and that I had no real basis for it except that I just felt off about it. He said fair enough, let's try one more test and if that comes back negative then we'll send you up to general medicine and see if they can track something down. That test was a VQ scan that found despite all other tests showing no results for blood clots, I actually had a whole bunch of them in both lungs. I ended up with a diagnosis of unprovoked bilateral pulmonary embolisms and am on blood thinners for life. Super grateful both for the bad feeling and the ER doctor who was willing to listen to it. I was learning violin when I was about 10 from an instructor at my local music shop. I got the weirdest feeling from him even though he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I wanted to vomit every time I looked at him, especially his hands. After 4 lessons I told my parents that I had a terrible feeling about him and I never wanted to go back. Luckily, they listened and didn't make me ever go to him again. A few years later he was arrested for molesting multiple of his students. I have no idea how I knew something was off. He never did or said anything but I just felt it. I woke up from a deep sleep at like 2 am during a winter storm, something wasn't right. I immediately went looking for my senior dog and couldn't find her anywhere in the house. My roommates had a tendency to let her out for a walk and forget about her, closing the door. I ran to the front of the house and found her laying on the welcome mat. She was hardly breathing and covered in snow. She had been outside alone for at the very least five hours. I moved out shortly after. I went out with my best friend on New Year's last year and were having drinks with her friends when I realized I was out of cigarettes. I left for a few minutes to walk over and grab a pack and ended up talking to a homeless guy for a while, and when I went over to the entrance of the bar she was outside and said something mean to me for no reason and walked off. I was confused so I decided it would be good if I took a walk to let her cool off and then figure out what she was upset about. I was going to walk down the street for a bit but something told me to turn left, walking behind the bar and then turning to the side of the bar when I see a girl laying down on the sidewalk and people walking by her. As I'm walking over to help I realize it's my friend and she's not very conscious. She was probably drugged while I was getting smokes and who knows what would have happened if I hadn't decided to go that way. I was offered a dream job at almost double my salary in a different city. It was only two hours away, but something told me not to take the job. I had a number of people tell me I would never have another opportunity like this, and my fear of leaving my hometown was holding me back. Two months after I turned it down, that division of the company was sold, and everyone in that department lost their job. I'd have been stuck in a new city with no friends or family nearby, and no job prospects. I'm afraid of roller coasters, mostly heights but they go hand in hand. 
My friends and I went to a theme park and went on one that was in darkness and went underground. I rode it once, sitting in the back, and really enjoyed it surprisingly. When we reached the start again, there was no line, as it was the end of the day, so they asked if we wanted a final go before they shut down. Something in my gut told me not to go on so, despite my friends nagging, I didn't and waited with the bags. My friends came back around a few minutes later white as a sheet. About three quarters of the way through the ride, there's a big drop then it goes fast and just before that, my friend in the back bar had risen up. Apparently they had to grip onto her for the rest of the ride whilst trying to push the bar back down. My aunt told me a story about my dad who greatly dislikes his sister and is an all-around idiot 98% of the time, calling her out of the blue one night while she was in college. She answered, he said he didn't know why but he had this urge to call her, to make sure she was okay. She told him she was fine and thanked him for calling to check on her. She never told anyone else except me, and hopefully a therapist or two, but she was holding the bottle of pills she was planning to commit suicide with right when he called her. Twenty-some years later and she's very happy with her decision to live. I matched with a guy on Tinder. We exchanged messages, and everything was fine, normal. We decided we would meet up for coffee in a week. A few days after we arranged the coffee date, he messaged me saying his father had passed away in those few days. He couldn't meet me in public. He could only meet me in private at his apartment. I trusted my gut, sent my condolences, but said I couldn't meet him somewhere private. He tried to tell me I could trust him because he had a dog. I still declined. He got really aggressive and started messaging me horrible things. He called me every name in the book. I ended up blocking him. I tried to find him later on, and he basically never existed. He could have blocked me on all social media. But I couldn't find a trace of him anywhere. I don't know what the outcome would have been, but I just couldn't do it. In 2004, on Boxing Day. Not me but my mother family trip including all cousins and extended family on my dad's side to visit the coastal south of Sri Lanka on vacation, about 20 people in all. Well planned trip, last moment my mother didn't want to go. No reason at all. None of us could get her to explain why but she refused to go. So we went inland on a different trip to see some other relatives. Around midday, the entire extended family now on both sides were sitting shocked in front of the television watching the very same hotel we booked being washed away live by the tsunami. To date, she still can't explain what she felt. I was president of a club, and a guy who'd recently joined just set off my alarm bells, but he never did anything wrong. I still couldn't shake the feeling he was off. I asked my best friend, a pretty burly guy, to just keep an eye on him during a conference we went to. Most of the club, minus me, went to a party at the conference, my best friend kept an eye on the weird guy for most of the night and ended up stopping him from forcing a passed out drunk girl. I pretty much always trust my gut feelings now. Not mine, but my dad's. I was downstairs helping him with some woodworking when I was 10 or 11. He went to run a 2x4 through the table saw when he noticed I was at his elbow rather than behind him. He stopped and told me to never stand behind a board when it's going through the saw in case it gets thrown. I thought he was being overly cautious and I didn't have as good of a view from behind him, but whatever, I got behind him. He flipped on the saw and ran the board through. He only got one third of the way through, though, when the blade hit a knot and flung the 2 by 4 hard enough to crash against the wall 10 feet behind. If I hadn't moved it would have hit me square in the chest and could have killed me. I used to never wear my seat belt. This was before they were annoying as hell if you didn't put it on. One time I was sitting in the passenger seat of a car and had a gut feeling to put it on. Not even a minute later we were hit by someone doing about 60 miles per hour. Cops said if I didn't have on my seatbelt I would have went through the windshield. I always wear my seatbelt now. My wife and I had an apartment in a really sketchy area of a city we used to live in. One day, we were walking home and could hear people yelling at a general commotion from a house about a block ahead of us. Nothing out of the ordinary for this area though. For whatever reason, something didn't feel right to me. I put my hand down low and whispered to my wife give me your phone, give me your phone, this was before everyone had a phone, only my wife had a cell between us. I dialed 911 as soon as she handed me the phone. Within two seconds after I dialed, a guy burst out of a car parked in front and ran at the house with two giant butcher knives screaming I'm gonna kill everyone. 
I got the operator just as he was banging and trying to break down the door. As I was talking with the operator, he turned and looked at us and started running full speed toward us. He was about 40 feet away when four cruisers came screaming up the street and stopped between us and him. The cops were able to arrest him without any issue.